Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How's everybody? Okay, who's making their first communion this year? Okay, all you guys, stand up and follow me. Come on. We're coming right here. Okay? Everybody see if you can come around. You guys can stand closer to it, because I've seen this before. You come all the way around, okay? Does anybody know what this is? What is it? What is it? It's where you get baptized. So how many people remember their baptisms? You do? I am, I am amazed that you guys remember. Did you, did, you, did you see the DVD or the video or anything like that? Okay. Well. A long time ago, because how old are you guys? Eight. 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 Okay, okay, got it all. Seven, we got sevens, we got eights. A long time ago, not necessarily with this, this bowl right here, but this bowl, when we're going to baptize people, it's filled with water. And the priest comes up, and he says a prayer, and he makes the sign of the cross over. We say, God, please bless this water. Because then something special happens. Your mom and dad... Your family come here and bring you here, and they want you to have a real, this contact with God. Like, you have guys that friends? Yeah. You have friends? Okay. Well, God wants to be so close with you that we got this thing called we pour water on your head and say, you're now a part of the, the Catholic Church. You're now a friend with Jesus. And so this is where it starts. So right now, because it's, we're in the season of Lent, that's why we got purple and all different kinds of things, when we come, and when it's not COVID, we fill this bowl with water. We take the right hand. Show me your right hand, okay? And we, when there's water in it, we go in to the dive with the right hand, okay? And if you can't reach, you can do it in a few minutes. And you take it out. It's got water on it. And what do we do with it now? Do we shake our hands? What do we do? No. What do we do? We put it on our forehead. We start with the forehead. In the name of the Father. And then we go down here. And of the Son. Okay? And then the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so on the day you're baptized, the priest says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So that's why every time you put your hand in here, you're saying, yes, Jesus. Yes, God, I want to be friends with you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So when there's water in it again... That's what we'll be able to do. So this is where it all starts for you guys. For all of us, we become friends with God, friends with Jesus. So now what I want you to do, head back to your, your parents, okay? And we're going to keep this journey going on. Okay, everybody's back where they're supposed to be? Okay, now, maybe what you can do, and I don't know if you've done this in a long time, but maybe with your parents or your grandparents, you can go back to when you were baptized. Maybe there's, there's photos on somebody's phone, or maybe there is um, somebody videoed it or something like that, and it's a DVD, whatever it is. See if you can find those pictures to remember your, the day you were baptized. Because it was a special day because your mom and dad said, we want them, we want this child. We want our children to be close to God. And we're bringing them to church. And that's why you're here today. Because your moms, your dads want you to be tight. You understand the word tight? We're going to be close. We're going to be real close with God. And that's why we come here. Because are you guys busy during the week? Are you busy? Do you have school? What else you got going on during the week? Sports. sports? What else you got? Lacrosse. We got sports. Other things. What else are you doing? Ninja Warrior class. Okay. I haven't tried one of those yet, but I'm going to see if I can look into it. What else? Other than sports. What else? Basketballs. We got more sports. Anybody do anything else? What else? School, what else? Football. CCD, what else? What else? Soccer, what else? Dance. Okay, 
why didn't I, I should have known that about you. You got all this energy. Oh, we got more. What else? Softball. Softball. What else? Gymnastics. Gymnastics. Instruments. Instruments. What else? Aqua. Aqua? What's that? Dance gymnastics. Okay, I'm going to have to learn about that too. What else? Swimming. Swimming. Hockey. Hockey. We got, what else? Karate. Karate. What else? Dance. What else? Wrestling? Really? Excellent. What else? Baseball. Baseball. Okay, we got sports, we got dance, we got instruments, we got CCD, we got school. And how about, do you eat occasionally? Do you do that? What, what, what else? Ballet. Ballet. Beautiful. So, yes, Max. Out of school classes. One more time. Out school classes? Okay, we're gonna talk more about that. I wanna find out more about that later, okay? On the way out, okay? So, one more, yes. Horseback riding. Horseback riding. I've never done that. I'm gonna to have to hear a little more about that. Anyway, you guys are very busy. So my point about this is we come here, hopefully on Sundays, Saturday nights. Why? Because God wants to take special care of us. And it's something called the Mass, and this is something that's going to happen with your First Communion. Come to, to Mass, and Jesus, our God, he wants to feed us. How many people ever get hungry here? Okay. I'm going to check with your parents to make sure, okay? Raise it real high. Let me see. How many people get hungry? And parents, too. You can do the hands, too. Okay. Hands down. Here's one of the things that I do before I come to, to church, before I come to Mass. Because sometimes I'm so busy, I forget to take time to spend with God. In other words, sometimes what I do is I come over to one or two places. So during the weekdays, I sit here. But sometimes during the day, I come and I sit here. And I just take like five minutes, ten minutes, just nobody's here, just to be quiet and to say, Jesus, here I am. I want to spend some time with you. And a lot of times I don't even have to say anything. I just want to sit here and just let God love me. But I'm so busy sometimes that I forget to do that. So one of the things that I do before I come to Mass on Sundays, and I come to Mass on Sundays too, I want to remember where I'm hungry. Now, I don't mean here, but let me give you some examples. Sometimes, even when you're seven and eight years old, life can get so crazy, and you can just, and with COVID and masks and a million things, you can just feel like sad. And sometimes we can feel like there's just too much going on. And I'm a part of a family. I have two brothers and two sisters, and I have a mom. And my brothers and sisters don't get along with each other. Does that happen in, sometimes you hear stories about other people's families? It doesn't happen in your families, right? Okay, well, my brothers and sisters, we're all old. And they don't get along. And I'm the only one who talks to everybody. And so I come here hungry and say, God, Here's where I need you. Here's where my family needs you. So in other words, what I do to get ready for Mass, because God wants to feed me and feed you, is I try to take a minute and just say, God, here's where I am hungry for you. Here's where I need you. Here's where my family needs you, because, Lord, I have a, a cousin right now. He hates himself. And he, he does bad things to himself. And so I bring him to God. And so one of the things you need to do when you come here, come hungry. And I don't mean stomach again. I mean, maybe that's something parents you can do with your, your kids as well. Where do we need, where does our family need God right now? Maybe grandma's sick. Or maybe school's so hard. 
but it's a, it's a great conversation even to have on the car ride over. Where do we need God in our family? Where do we need God in our family? And then everything that we do up here on Sundays is about God saying, I'm here for you. I'm here for your family, and I'm going to feed you. And so I'm going to make this real simple today, because it's, sometimes it's a little complicated, like, what are we doing here? It's not a video game. I'm bored. But if you come in and you're hungry and say, here's where my family needs God, and parents, again, this is why it's so important that you tr have this conversation, because kids are smart, and as you know, they're human sponges. They see things. They hear things, they repeat actions, they repeat things they've heard. They know what's going on. Have the conversation on the way to church. Where do we need God? And then simple things happen here. How many people like birthday parties? Okay, terrific. We got seven and eight year olds. My birthday, I'm not gonna tell you, I'm, I was gonna say, Take a guess as to how old I am. But I'm afraid the last time I did that, someone thought I was 100. <laughs> no, I'm not going there. No, no. On the way out, you can tell me how old you think I am, okay? On the way out, okay? You can take a guess, and whoever comes closest, I'm not going to promise anything, but we'll figure it out. Um, but here's the thing. At birthday parties, we get together, we see people, we have friends, hugs and kisses. And that's one of the things that we do here at Little Flower. Before we even begin Mass, in addition to being hungry for God, one of the things we do is we take a moment just to say hi to everybody. And these days we say a COVID safe wave, okay, because we're still trying to be a little careful these days. Um, and then we start Mass. And just like we did at the baptismal font before, we start, and let's do this together, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And then we do a couple of things. We hear stories. We go up. We have someone who's called the lector. Usually it's a, a young adult or an adult. And they come up here in this great big book. It's called fancy church word, lectionary. And for this weekend, it's got all the readings for this Sunday. And it's stories about how God loves you and how God loves me. How God loves you and how God loves me. And then it's the job of the priest to take all of God's words and to try to make sense out of them. So, for example, one of the things that happens in when we hear stories from God, he'll talk about, for example, let's go to this window right here. These stained glass windows I got from a church in Bayonne that was closing down. And I thought they were so beautiful. And people wanted beautiful stained glass windows. Anybody know what this is a story of? Aiden. You forgot? Okay. What is this? The story of Jesus was born. And what do we call that day? What do we call that day? Christmas. We call this Christmas. Now, later on, on the way out, if you want to, I want you to check out Jesus. Because the reason is, as someone who goes to the YMCA to work out, Jesus got, has got pecs and guns. <laughs> I want you to check him out. While he was in his blessed mother... He must have had a gym in there. <laughs> I have never seen a baby look so jacked. <laughs> Check him out. Jesus is jacked. That's a story that we take from the Bible. It's a story we take from the Bible. Now, here's an example of what I mean. That the, it's the priest's job now to take that story and our lives and try to make sense of it. And here's the story. Jesus was born, do you know what kind of a place he was born in? Anybody remember? Where was he born? It, it was kind of like that, exactly, but I want to find out more specifically. Where was he born? A stable. Have you ever seen a stable before? 
tell me about it. Tell me what you, you see. Tell me what you smell. Tell me what you hear. What? Exactly. You see horses and you smell poop. Okay? That's a very nice way to put it. And it's true. You go into a stable, it stinks. It smells. It's cold because it's out kind of like in the open. And that's where Jesus was born. Here's the story that I think I would tell for Christmas. That Jesus, his life wasn't easy. And he's born in a place that's a mess. And just like our lives can get a little messy too, Jesus is does not afraid to come into our messes. Parents, I share that with you because we all have messes, right? We all have messes. And as much as I'm talking to the kids today, I'm talking to you because you're the ones who are going to translate all this down the road to them. Jesus is born into a mess. It stinks. It's poor. It's not pleasant. And it's God saying to you and to me, as adults and to kids, I want to be born into your mess. I want to come into your mess. Yes. No. I'm going to correct you on that. He wasn't born in heaven. He comes from heaven. And don't ask me how it all happened, but Jesus was born right here on earth, but not, not in the United States. He was born in another place, okay? But thank you for sharing that. It's my job, then, to explain. Christmas is a beautiful time in lights and stars, but let's not forget that God came to be with us, and we don't have to be perfect. He likes mess. He comes to us. So parents, that's your job. And so after we hear that story, then maybe it reminds us a little bit more like, you know what, I'm still hungry for God. Because God, you know what, I've got messes in my life. And my life as a child or as an adult, it's not always perfect. And then we do something very special. We come and we bring up, we bring up two gifts. Does anybody, and they usually come from the back of the church. And a couple of people, sometimes, you know, seven and eight-year-olds bring them up. Do you know what the gifts are? Wine and bread. Wine and bread. And we believe, this is what we believe as Catholics. As Catholics, as people who say, you know, I believe in God and I believe in Jesus and I believe in the Holy Spirit. Later on in Mass, I take this book. This has got all the prayers that I need for Mass. And I'm going to turn to one page in particular. And do you, let me ask you this question first. Do you think that God can do anything? What do you think? I'm talking to seven and eight year olds right now. Do you think that God can do anything? What do you think? Yes. Okay. Why do you think that? Okay. Well, talk to your mom. You, can, you guys can figure it out. Okay. Tell me about, what do, you, do you think God can do anything? Well, why do you think that? Tell me. Um, do you think God can do anything? Yeah, he can do anything. Okay. Talk to your mom. See, what, see, we can talk a little bit more about why. Do you think God can do anything? Think about it. And you don't even have to, you don't even have to agree with me. What do you think? I think God is like special. God is special. Thank you. Jesus is special. Thank you. Tell me. Probably. Probably. Okay. Good. I like your honesty. What do you think? He created the whole world. So if he can create the whole world, he can do anything. Okay. Let's leave it at that for now. If you think... And if you're not even sure, if you think that God can do anything, and I do, God can do anything. He says these words at Mass, the, ma the words that I say. He takes the bread, and I don't think we, let me see if we have any. 
Ah. We call it a host, but it's bread. During the Mass, I say the words that Jesus said. Because I represent Jesus. And it says this. And he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his friends. And he said this. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body. So at Mass, we believe if we believe that God can do anything, that he changes this bread into him. Now, don't ask me to explain it all because I don't understand it all myself, but I believe that somehow or other, Jesus says it, this is him later on at Mass, not right now. And when we receive First Communion, we receive God. And he makes us strong. Let me talk about that a little bit. When you hear the words strong, what does that make? What do you think of? When you think of, hear the word strong, seventh and eight, seven and eight year olds, stand up. First communion people, all stand up. Show me what you think strong means. Like, do something with your body to show me what you think strong is. Okay, I, I'm seeing all the guns here, just like Jesus up there in, on Christmas Day. We're seeing the gun. We're going to work the lats there now. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do like the, we're going to do the peck development right now. Okay, everybody down. That's strong in one way. I'm going to give you a couple other examples of how Jesus wants to make you strong. When mom or dad asks you to do something and your hearing stops, does that ever happen? Parents, is that parents? Does that happen? Where all of a sudden children who had perfect hearing all of a sudden can't hear anymore. When Jesus, when you receive communion, it's not magic, but here's how Jesus wants you to make you strong. When there's something you don't want to do, like you don't want to listen, or you don't want to help your mom or dad the first time they ask you to do something, or when you haven't cleaned your room in 700 years, or you've been playing video games for 701 years. Okay. Strong is this. Strong is this. It can be this. Not just this. Strong can be this. Mom or dad says, I need you to go walk the dog. Or I need you to go clean your room. Or I need you to do your homework. And you hear the message. And because you love your mom and dad, you're strong, and you do it. Even if you feel like you don't want to do it because you love them so much. So when we receive Jesus in this bread where he says, this is my body, he gives us strength to do the right things. How many people here who are going to make their first communion want to do the right things? All six of you, huh? Okay. Of course you want to do the right things, but you know what? Let me give you an example for me. Sometimes there's people in this world that I don't like. And sometimes the first thing I want to do is when someone hurts me, I want to hurt them back. That's how I feel. But I know that when Jesus gives me strength, I'm still going to try to be polite and I'm going to try to be kind and maybe sometimes it means I have to tell them the truth. Like, you know what? I don't like the way you just talked to me. Please don't do that again. To be strong means sometimes to do the hard things, like listening to mom, listening to dad. And some, I'm going to give you another example. When I was seven and eight years old, I can remember being in school and being bullied. And I didn't like it. And I hated going to school because there was one boy in particular who used to make my life miserable, he used to make my life very difficult. And I was even afraid to talk about it with my mom and dad. And one day, I went to church, and I just said a prayer, and I received communion, and I said, Jesus, 
I hate that boy. Jesus, help me. And then I got the courage to go to my mom and my dad to tell them what was happening. And they fixed it. Now, sometimes that doesn't happen because bullying is very complicated. But I had the strength from connecting with Jesus to deal with something that was really, really hard. And I hope that never, ever, ever happens to you. I hope it never happens. But that's what strong is. It's not the muscles. But if you want to be strong and do always the right thing and take good care of yourself and listen to mom and dad, be polite to people, even who might be difficult, that's why we come here. We come here so Jesus can give us strength to do really hard stuff. And so that's what the Mass is, really keeping it short, sweet, and simple. We come here hungry. We bless ourselves when there's water again in the font. And remember, Jesus, yes, I'm a, a friend of yours. I was baptized. We come here and we say, God, I'm hungry. I need you. My family needs you. We hear his stories. The priest hopefully makes it all better and understandable. We can check out the windows and see what they're telling us too. We can check out Jesus. That's God who said, I love you so much that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let myself die. And what happened after, after he died, something happened, a couple days after he died. It's in one of the windows in the church. See if you can figure out which one it is. Which window is it that shows us what happened to him after three days after he died? I see you pointing to that one. Okay. What is that window there? What is that window? Tell me. Yell it out. What's, what's the Sunday that we remember when we see this window? What is it? What do we call that Sunday? It's not Christmas. It's not Hanukkah. What is it? Easter. Jesus tells us that even when things, even when he died, that's not the end of the story. That's the end of the story. And he tells us that when we have bad days, that when we have people who love us, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to always get better, but we got people who love us. And we come here, we hear his word, we receive Jesus. First Holy Communion is coming soon. Jesus wants to give you strength to, be, to do the right things and to be the best that you can be. And then at the very end, the priest says this, get out of here. Well, he doesn't say that. I don't say that. He says, go. Go in peace to love and serve God and one another. In other words, you've got Jesus in you now all the time, but he's fed you with his word and with communion, and now you've got strength to do really tough stuff like listening to parents and doing homework on time and cleaning your room and not playing video games for 701 years. Oh, come on. Strength. We're talking strength here. Come on. We're talking strength. Do the right thing. And so, when he's, I say go, Jesus doesn't want us staying here. We're here for 45 minutes to an hour. Get out of here and go be Jesus for your family. Go be Jesus for the, your classmates, the people you play lacrosse with, the people you dance ballet with, all these people. Go and be Jesus. Go be kind. Say thank you to your mom and your dad every day. Be nice to your brothers and sisters even when they make you crazy. Or even better, when they make you crazy and if you got your own room or another place, go there before you get in trouble. Right? Because sometimes adults do this too. We're not smart enough. Jesus can make us smart to do the right thing. If you know you're going to get into a fight with your brother or sister, leave the space. Does that happen? You get into fights with your brothers and sisters and siblings and stuff? Okay. How old are you? Six. Six. And you're still here? Thank you for coming. So brothers and sisters, that's the story. We come here because Jesus wants to feed us. He promises to be with us. 
but he wants us to be like him when we leave here. At home, first of all. At school, he's born into messes. He wants to be a part of our messes. And parents, on your way to here, as you're driving here, that whether it's a five-minute ride or a three-minute ride, just have that conversation. Where does our family need God today? Maybe grandma's sick. Maybe I have COVID. Maybe somebody at school's bothering me. Maybe I don't like myself. Where do we need God in our family? And parents, I would just encourage you to do that so you come here hungry and let Jesus feed you. Okay? Anybody got any questions or thoughts or comments? What's, what's going on in your heads? Tell me. What? Well, Jesus is two things, and I'm going to get a little, little complicated, a little more difficult. We believe that Jesus is God, and he's like us. He's human. He's both things, and it's going to be very hard to explain. We believe that when he rises again, that he's still both, that he's God, and he's like us, human. He's both. He's not an angel. He's, like, bigger than an angel. Does that help a little bit? Is he bigger than the earth? Hmm. Because my mom told that, me that God is bigger than the earth. Well, bigger than anything. God is bigger than anything because God can help us to deal with our messes. And when life isn't always easy and we don't get along with a brother or a sister, God is bigger in the sense that he can give us strength. And I could probably talk about it a lot more. But if you want to know more, maybe you and your mom... And your brother can come to see me one day and we could talk a little bit more about it. What do you think? I'd be willing to do that. Who do you love? Who do you love? Do you love God? Thank you. Question, yes. So I thought you said Jesus was God was born. Oh, well, you know, thank you because all these things need to be clarified. Jesus, and I don't know how he does it, but Jesus is with his Father in heaven. But he says that I'm going to make this bread, I'm going to make it me. I'm going to make me food for you. Now, I don't understand how it all happens, but we believe that somehow or another Jesus, because he can do anything, because he's God, he makes himself the bread. And then he feeds us so that we have, we have strength in God. I know, you can make that face, because sometimes... And I'm saying to you, like, I'm doing a really bad job of explaining this. But maybe your mom can help you with that a little bit, too? <laughs> okay. And if you need to come and see me in the office with your mom, we'll, I'll try to do a much better job. Okay? Um, thank, thank you for understanding, and forgive me for not being perfect with this stuff. Yes? Say it one more time. What does the bunny have to do with Jesus? Oh, what's the bunny got to do with Jesus rising? From what I hear, bunnies, bunnies like to have lots of children. And so because this is about new life, Jesus, new life, we have bunnies and we use Easter eggs because they're all about new life. Does that make any sense? I'm much better at Easter bunnies than I am at explaining the Eucharist. Yes, sir. Did you have a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't know. Teresa, you didn't warn me. Is No. How do I explain? Whew. Okay, I'm going to do the best I can with this. And if I don't get it right, if you want to come and see me too, maybe I can do a better job another time. But when, G when Jesus dies and he rises again and then he goes back to heaven, he sends his spirit. He sends like a part of himself to be in our world, like inside of me, inside of you, and to try to make us all good and try to love each other. So Jesus is kind of like the Holy Spirit, but different. And again, I'm doing a really bad job with explaining this. <laughs> am I helping or am I making it worse? I'm making it worse. Okay. 
Yes. How did Jesus make the world? Um, I think it, it was his father. And he's, I think he, it, when I read the book, the first book of the Bible, the Jewish part of the Bible, it says Genesis, God breathed. It says God just breathed. And something, it's like this all happened. And I don't, again, I don't know how it happened. All it says is God thought it or God breathed it. And like it all happened. Not like this building, but somehow it all just started happening. And it's kind of like, well, I'll leave it at that. And I'm probably doing a bad job with this, too. So please forgive me. Yes, I'll, the six-year-old wants to talk. How are the plants being made? I am not a scientist. You want, thank you, Max. I thank you for sharing. I don't know how that all happened, but I think somehow God had something to do with it. And I think it's had something to do with, like, explosions in the universe. I think it was called, like, the Big Bang Theory, or that's a TV show. Um, anyway. Yes, sir. God the Father. Yes. Now, let me take you to window number two here. This is not a great, this is not, I don't think this is what God the Father looks like, but this is God the Father, this is Jesus, and up at the very top is a dove, that's supposed to be the Holy Spirit, that's how we kind of like picture Father, Son, and Spirit, but I'm not sure they quite look like that, um, but anyway, it's something else to point to to kind of explain things. I am getting so deep in trouble right now, <laughs> and because this is being recorded, if Teresa decides to send this to the bishop or the pope, I am in real trouble. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to just say, why don't we close with a prayer? And I'm going to pray for all of you. And I'm going to get myself out of trouble. So let's do what we started out with. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And I'm going to pray. Jesus, thank you for loving us so much that you're God and you came to earth to show us how to live and how to love and we just ask you to bless us and our families and help us when we're hungry to always come to you and help us to come here to receive you in your word and in communion and help us with our families even when things are messy to know that our families love us and that you love us. So thank you, Jesus, for this time together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, everybody. If I created more messes, please feel free to contact Teresa. <laughs> or Kristen. Christ Kristen is now running things for a while with the, with the elementary religious formation. So Kristen, thank you so much for doing that. And if you want to guess my age on the way out, I'll be waiting, okay? <laughs>